Uh, welcome to this episode of Click Team. So we've set this up for the whole week. Uh, we're in a position now where we're loading from an array. We've got three different tile types and we have no way of easily editing our array, which is a bit of a downside. It's going to take us forever to get the map that we want unless we're clever about it and this is what today's video is and I'm hoping, I'm praying I can keep this to a reasonable time uh, but we shall see. I'm going to try and do it as quick as we can but this is going to be quite complicated and we shall see how quickly I can go. So let's go to the screen without any further ado. So um, I've loaded up the same uh, project as we've been using this week um, and I'm just going to click into it. And let's see what we've got. So we run, and it's loading from the array that we've got um, stored in our assets folder. And it's all it's got is that one at the moment, which is not going to be very good. Actually, I load that again. What I want to be able to do is click on these and filter through the different tile types, because that's going to be a lot quicker, a lot lot quicker. Um, and I, I want to find some way of doing that. Now, um, if I go into the uh, event editor, which is that one there. Um, I'll, I'll need to have a new kind of group, I think, um, which we're going to call dev. And the reason why you create a new group is we, we don't actually want the user to be able to click on these tiles when this game is released, uh, otherwise that would be a bit of a disaster because it would make the game very, very weird. Actually, maybe that is the game you want to create, kind of a, a SimCity style game where you can change things. Um, that's not the game we want to make. So we create a dev area so that when we release it, we can just make it not active and that means that it won't ever run, but we can keep it in case we need to make changes down the line. You can even password protect the, um, the group so if you share this with someone else um, and you don't want them making changes to this area, um, then you can password protect it. I've never done that. We want to make it active. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, the mouse and user clicks on an object and it will be that tile. And what we want to do is change the direction. And I always do it with a calculation because um, this is going to be a lot easier. Um, so I'll make it one, and let's just test that run. And we have tested, we have done this before. There we are. Got all of the the C tiles in there. Brilliant. Um, but that doesn't actually change anything. Um, so what we want to be able to do is write that to the array. Now we did have that save array function there, so we can use that. Um, to save the array, but we actually need to write to the array. So we're going to write that to the array. So remember, it's a value array, it's not a string. If you write a string to it, it just won't do anything. Um, and that can cause confusion because you've got to remember uh, what type of array you have. Because if it's a string array or a text array, as they call it in the front end, um, then writing a value to, to it, it just won't, just won't do it. Okay, so we're going to do 1 and the x index. Now the x index will be the x alterable value for the one it's clicked on. So that's where that alterable value has come in. And I'm just going to copy that because I know the y index will be the y value of that. And the z index will be 0 for all of these. So now we've written that in, and I'm just going to click on that and press copy, and then click on that and press paste, and so we'll save the array after we've done that. So it's just going to save the array each time. And let's run. So I'll make a little, a little bit of a lake there. So I like doing this, this is the problem. <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Okay, let's close it down. And hopefully when I run it, it's written the values to the right place and it will save that array. And then next time I load it up, hopefully that cool little lake will be there. This is the moment of truth. If this works, this is going to be a video that is an acceptable length. 
oh, there you go. And it works perfectly. So every time I click on it, it will create that. But how am I going to create the sand? Well, that's good. sand's going to be a bit of a problem. So at the moment, I'm only ever creating C because it's a, a fixed number. But what I can do is I can... Um, where can I store this? Um, I can do it. I can create an active, or I can do this globally. Mm. Let's go into the frame editor. What I'm going to do is create uh, active, and I'm just going to color the sides of it. And what I'm going to do is rename this, which we haven't done with any of our objects so far. And this will be our temp store or our data store. It's not it's not a temp store. Data store. I should do come case, so lowercase first. So this is going to be a data store. And what I'm going to use is the alterable values in this to store things I want to store. And so I'm going to say um, current tile type. And I name these so that I don't reuse this one for something else. So every time I use this data store, I'm just renaming this. And I think I've done too much without explaining what I'm doing. So I'm going to take a step back and explain. Um, the uh, temptation is to use the global um, alterable values for everything. Um, and what I need here is somewhere to store a temporary piece of data which I'm going to use just for this frame, um, but there isn't really anywhere else to store um, alterable values that are to do with the frame. So what I do is I create another active object which isn't going to ever be created. It's not going to be a player or an enemy or a tile. It's not going to be anything on the screen, but I've created it just to store loads and loads of data um, for this frame. Um, I use this all the time. This is really, really common in, in my games. My games will always have a data store. And I, I can't be bothered with graphics, so what I do is just colour the sides of this. I don't want it to be solid colour um, because that will get mixed up with tiles and other graphics. So Click Team's little diamond thing is a really good indication for me that that's a, a data object. And so the only thing that that's used for is to store data. And the data I want to store is the current direction that I want the tile to be in. And so how am I going to change the direction? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say on the keyboard, upon pressing um, 0, we're going to um, change that. We're going to set that to 0. I'm just going to click on that. Copy, paste, paste. Upon pressing 1, upon pressing 2, I'm going to change that to 1 and 2. And then instead of uh, setting the direction to 1, I'm going to set the direction to whatever value that is. I'm just going to control and um, copy that because I'm going to need that here. So I'm not going to write the value of 1, I'm going to write the value of the current tile type into there and then save it. So, if I run this now, now I'm going to click, I think it starts at zero, so it's going to start with grass. I'm going to click one. I'm going to add a bit more water. <laughs> Perfect. And I'm going to click two, and I'm going to add more sand. And this actually gets quite relaxing. <laughs> okay, so let's close that down. And I'm just going to save and just keep try and keep in the habit of saving because I've lost loads and loads of uh, stuff before, not just in Click Team, but in everything for not saving enough. And I'm going to run the application and that works perfectly. The only irritating thing, um, well, there's a few irritating things. The first thing is I don't know what the current tile type is. So what I could do is add a menu down here somewhere, which I'm not going to, um, but... I could add a menu here, which is current tile type. Instead of pressing 0, 1, 2, I could have a selection box here that's only visible um, if I'm in development mode. 
Um, so it, it's probably going to be hidden above the frame and then if development mode group is active it will move it down here so that I can actually uh, click on the things. Um, the other thing is that um, kind of more annoying is I've got to click each one I can't just click and drag so I want to change that and we've done this before it says user clicks uh, left button on that um, and what I want to do is have it so I can hold the button down um, and we had this with the keyboard so if you look here it says repeat while red arrow is pressed um, instead of just the click um, with the mouse it's slightly different um, so what I'm going to make, I'm going to make this inactive because chances are, and I'm just going to copy that and then make this active again. So this is a bit more fiddly, so I want to replace that. Now you'll notice with the key, uh, with the mouse, um, repeat while mouse key is pressed. There isn't an option to say repeat while mouse key is pressed on an active. And that's going to be a real problem um, because if I run that now, see it wipes everything out. And the reason it wipes everything out is there's no reference to the tile in here at all. There's no reference to the tile. So it's just going to keep destroying. So like as soon as you click the mouse button, it will just destroy all of them or set all of the direction to zero. And so if I run it again, oh, hang on, let's... I don't know what that was. Oh, application program friend, that's fine. Um, so if I clicked one and then clicked everything, they would all turn blue. And if I click two and then clicked on it, they'd all turn kind of golden. And this bit here, the reason it's not saving is this just breaks down because there's no alterable value X of that. There's no alterable value Y of that because there is no active two. There's nothing being referenced here. So it just gets confused and then refuses to do it. So what we need to do is add something to this. So insert. And we need to say when the mouse is over an object. And active 2. So we've got to kind of do it in two steps. We've got to say whilst the mouse button's pressed down. And then we're referencing a single active 2. We're saying that active 2. And then when we refer to it here it knows which one we're talking about. Hopefully this will work now. I'm not promising anything. So I'm going to add, I'm going to press one and add some more water, which hopefully this will work. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's much quicker. Look at that. And let's add some more sand. So press two. Let's have some sand up here. Perfect. Let's have some sand under the player. There we go. I'm going to do this, like, I'm going to literally finish this video and then carry on, like, colouring this in. <laughs> it says more about me. But if I close it down and load it again, it's there, ready to go. And how easy is that? You'd think that you'd have to manually change each one of these. Um, sometimes what I do is I um, create a program that reads the array and then manually change the numbers in the array. Um, but actually, this is so much more graphical, like I can actually see what's happening here and just ch edit things really, really quickly. And you, you imagine that dev menu there, which has all the objects in the game and you can just click on what you want. It's kind of like a Mario Maker 2 on the Switch, where you can just drag them in and it would just be so, so much simpler. I'm going to quit while I'm ahead because that's everything I wanted to do this week. Um, so I've hit all the objectives. Um, I would like to just add um, a thank you very much for those of you who have um, um, said comments, suggestions uh, in the comments for last week. Um, I film all these um, all these uh, videos at the weekend, um, so I'm already like looking forward to answering the first question and having a bit of fun, sort of going through how to do kind of uh, scrolling in Mega Man um, and that kind of Zelda scrolling. Um, please keep the suggestions coming. Um, I obviously do these videos as a kind of a hobby uh, rather than anything else because the ClickTeam community, although it's amazing, it's not a massive community. Um, so you know when you when you say comments like that and suggestions or anything like that, it's actually really really good to hear. So please keep them coming. 
and hopefully uh, today is Friday, hopefully by next weekend, so tomorrow, <laughs> um, I'll have loads more suggestions and things that you want me to go over um, and yeah, and hopefully we'll have a good time. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, please click subscribe. We release videos every single weekday at 7pm UK time. Thank you.